Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us and compliments of the season. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Modern medicine places great emphasis on patient-centered care. We always talk about patient-centered care here. To this end, health personnel and patients must act as partners for the best health outcomes. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was formalized in 1948, but it took a while for countries to adopt a Bill of Rights for patients. This recognizes the dignity of patients and their right to be treated as human beings, as well as recognizing the duty of care owed to them by medical practitioners and the state. The World Health Organization says that experience and research have shown that patients who are informed and involved and whose rights are taken into consideration recover quicker and have shorter hospital stays. We have in the studio my guest, the head of legal services with more than 28 years experience at the Lagos Teaching Hospital in Diaraba, Mr. Sheson Olajide. You're welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. So let me not assume. Let me first ask, do we have a patient's bill of rights in Nigeria? Well, we do not have a patient's bill of rights in Nigeria as a legislation, as a piece of legislation. But there was a document produced by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Health, uh, bills of uh, patients' rights. And um, that bill was even illustrated in such a way that uh, everybody can understand it, but it is not a legislation. So we do not have a piece of legislation on patients' rights. Does that mean that anything in it is not binding on anybody? It touched on so many things that uh, do have the backing of the law, right? But in terms of that document being cited, as a piece of legislation, it is not, because it was not passed by the uh, legislative houses. So as, uh, as concerns this document, what would you say are the major, major rights of patients in the document? Well, there are so many. Um, it covers a lot. Um, patients' right to considerate care, compassionate care, uh, the patient's right to dignity of the person, Patients' right to information, patients' right to make decisions, and patients' right to receive care without discrimination, and so on and so forth, quite a lot. Okay, is it true that there are some rights for patients in other claims that Nigerians cannot have because of lack of uh, access to national health, um, um, you know, the national health document? National documents such That's as... That's uh, NHS. Uh, NHS, okay. Um, basically, um, patients' rights and um, the services they're entitled to as human beings, there's no um, restriction. Okay. The person living in the U.S., the person living in Nigeria, we are all human beings. And if you look at uh, the uh, source our patients' rights are derived. You see that they are actually closely related to human rights. Okay. So closely, so human rights, those are things that are inalienable to you as a human being. And they are actually the uh, main source of patients' so rights. So you can go off the back of human rights and... Basically. You know, in fact, the trend worldwide rights. is um, to translate human rights into patients' rights. In fact, all the ones I cited to you are all traceable to the Constitution, okay. particularly Section 37 and Section 38 of the 1999 Constitution. Okay, before we go into the nitty-gritty of the rights themselves, I, I want to ask, do, do these rights differ from one country to the next, depending on their legislation? For example, uh, you talk about rights to considerate care. Yes. But, you know, some people have it as rights to have continuity of care. Is that yeah. the same? There are two different things. Two different things. Okay. Like when we say right to considerate care, that is right to compassionate care. You deliver uh, services to this patient, uh, taking into conditions, I mean, with empathy. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. taken into taking their feelings, feelings, into feelings into consideration. the emotions, the needs of that particular patient. That's like, that's and, like um, saying, um, in a way, saying, being sensitive to the culture that is it. of the people. That is it. Okay. You know, that's what we mean by considerate care. In other words, treat the patient the way you would wish to be treated if you were to be the patient. That would translate dignity. Yes, dignity. To the patient. Okay, exactly. So when we talk about continuity of care, what that means is that um, if the patient needs further care elsewhere or needs to be seen by other um, disciplines, there shouldn't be a break. It should be continuous. Even if the patient need care, uh, needs care in other facilities, it should be seamless. Okay, you don't now refer the patient to the hospital that is not ready to receive that patient. But you know, that would mean that apart from being considerate to a patient, you have to develop some rapport with yes. your colleagues as well. Yes, I agree with you. You see, uh, patient care, there are so many uh, people within the team to deliver this service to the patient. And I always liken it to a package. Right. Now, um, it involves even the family members too. You need to develop this relationship with everybody within the team, the doctor, the nurse, the pharmacist, and every, everybody concerned with the care of that patient. And um, it is something that you cannot say, I've done my bit, and you stop there. You don't care about what other people are doing to that your patient. So it involves everybody working in collaboration and as partners okay. for the good of the patient. So let's talk about rights to information. Okay. I think that there's so much to talk about under this topic. Yeah. There are some doctors who won't even answer your questions. Okay. You are asking, so what's wrong with me? What's the condition called? And they're getting irritated, you know? And, and, and patients, what does this do to patients? Okay, you see, it's the right of the patient to receive information, detailed and accurate information about his condition. It is a right. In fact, uh, Section 23 of our National Health Act covers that. The user, that is the patient, must have full knowledge of his condition, of his situation. It is the duty, your duty as a doctor, to give this patient sufficient information about his care, you know? And you should be able to do it in such a way that the patient is even able to give you more information that you are able to ask. So if the patient asks you a question, it is your responsibility to give the patient information, to clarify anything that concerns that patient. You see, if you don't give the patient information that he needs, I said earlier that the patient has the right to make decisions. If you don't give him information, you've undermined his right to make decisions. Mm. So you need to let the patient know what he needs to know and what you know about this condition. Do you feel that sometimes healthcare professionals are afraid that people are going to steal their information or do things for themselves rather than come to the doctor? Is that why they are cagey with information? Well, you cannot afford to be cagey with information. If you do that, you are violating the right of the patient, and it will be um, unethical. And I think this is actually touched by um, many of the code of ethics of the various professions. You need to let the patient know what uh, his condition is, and of course, what you plan to do with the patient, because it is his right, like I said, to make decisions. And that is where concepts such as informed consent, consent comes in in medical law. That is why we call it informed consent. Okay? It has to do with the quality of the consent the patient is given. Uh, the piece of paper they write will be worthless. The, the, the consent form, we call it, will be worthless if the patient does not have sufficient information regarding what he is signing. For example, in a surgery, what matters is not that uh, form signed by the patient. What the law looks at and the law is most, mo mostly concerned about is the process. Okay. the pre-operation communication between the surgeon and the patient. So information is key. And if you do not give the patient sufficient information about his care, it is, a, it is unethical, 
and in fact, it could be the basis of liability. Yes. Okay, we, we need to take a short break. Please okay. stay with us. We'll be back after the break with more. It's still health matters, and we're talking about patients' rights, something every single one of us should know. And uh, you can call 0808-054-2233 if you have a question on patients' rights. You can tweet at CTV underscore Mary A, which will be showing on your screen. And you can send email, moalale at channelcv.com. Now, uh, Mr. Olajide, someone joked one day, but, it, it, you know, it was serious, and he says, oh, you are entering the hospital, you know, the consultation room, explaining to the doctor what your symptoms are, and by the time you sat down and you finished explaining, he has a prescription. And they're like, who does that? He, he doesn't know what's wrong with me. And I found out that many people feel like that is the case. I know the patient has right to information, and, you know, obviously this is not the right thing to do. But some people have pleaded, you know, there are not enough doctors. We don't have time to sit around and be discussing with patients. What do you have to say to that? You see, every patient must be given the attention his condition requires. Okay. Uh, that have to see many patients is not enough reason. In fact, not, it's not reason at all for you to provide inadequate care for a particular patient that you are seeing. Because, like I said, that can even uh, lead to liability. So for each patient, what the law requires, ethically too, is for you to give the patient the attention that he needs. Not only that, like what you narrated now, the doctor ought to give the patient, I mean, give the patient, the doctor ought to give the patient information, explanation as to what his diagnosis is and the prognosis. So that is the duty of the doctor. For the doctor to just look at you and scribble something, go give it to the nurse, that is wrong. He needs to discuss with you, he needs to give you information about what he intends to do to you, even the prescription. He needs to explain what he's giving you so that you know what to expect and what not to expect. So I saw something curious. Okay about the right to medical records yes. and the right to explanation of the bill. Yes. People have complained to me that they go to a hospital and they give them a blank bill sheet, billing sheet to sign. Okay. And they say, well, that's the way we do it. Why do they do that? Do we have the right really to know how we are being billed and why, and to see our medical records? Two things. Now, regarding the bill, you have every right to detailed and itemized bill. You, need, you can even require for explanation as to the components of that bill. In other jurisdictions, these are covered by specific laws, but we don't have specific laws on that aspect in our climb here. But then, it's a matter of contract. You provided services to me. I need to know what I'm paying for. So it is my right to know exactly what I'm paying for. How many, um, I mean, uh, was it, uh, the, the prescriptions? Break it down, I need to know, okay? So you're entitled to know that, detailed, even itemized, of what you are paying for, what services you have, con you have consumed. So it is your right, and you can insist on that. Okay. And regarding um, the yes, other issue you raised about entitlement to records, records. like I said, uh, there's a dearth of legislation directly on issues like this, you know, in our environment here. I mean, like uh, elsewhere, there are legislations, you know, covering what you're entitled to. For example, in the United States, you have what they call uh, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996 that deals with issues like this. But then, we have to have recourse to the general law, okay? Now, the information, who is the owner of the information we're talking about? It is the patient. It is the patient. So the patient has the right, just like I said, to information about the situation. So if he wants um, to have his medical record or medical report, in other jurisdictions, you have to oblige him 
because there are specific laws as to that and what you can give, right? But here, I know that in practice, most hospitals will tell you that, look, the uh, medical record is our property. Yes, that's what they say. Although the information belongs to you, but the documents itself belong to, to us. Them. Okay, so on that basis, uh, they will just give you like extract or medical report, a summary of the uh, situation or condition of the patient or the services rendered, you know, by, by them, okay? But in other places, the patient can seek for copies of uh, his case notes and they will oblige him. Okay, here in Nigeria, if a patient feels his rights have been impinged upon, yeah. is there anything he can do within the hospital setting to set it to rights? Yes, um, if you feel that, um, you have a complaint. You have every right to ventilate it, okay? And the best thing to do is to approach those, those within, um, closely, really, I mean, close, uh, those who are providing the services, immediately providing the services. If you have the doctor with you, let him know your concern. If you have the nurse with you, let her know your concern. If you think you are not satisfied with any aspect of the care you've been given. In fact, Section 30 of the National Health Act says that a patient has a right to complain, not only regarding the services, but also the manner of the delivery of the service. Okay, so we have every right to complain. And of course, when you complain, it should be without reprisals. That is the fact that That's you complain thing. Yes. does not mean that, look, they're not going to, in quote, show you paper for trying to, you know, uh, complain for the services you've been uh, given. But the thing is that you need to take advantage of mecha local mechanisms first. For example, those who are within the, the, the close range that you can uh, express your concern to. If that does not solve the problem, you go to people higher in hierarchy, okay? If it is, say, a resident doctor that you have complaints against, you can go to the consultant. the consultant. Even if it is against the, against the consultant, you can go to those, the management, okay? the management and escalate it to those who would need to address. And I think any responsible uh, senior uh, person within the system, because we'll try as much as possible to resolve that problem. Like I always say, the joy of the patient is the joy of the doctor. I mean, nobody sets out, no, no same person would uh, be happy to be unwell. And there's no same doctor that will set out to harm a patient. His business, is to make sure it solves the problem of the uh, patient. So if you are even complaining, you are helping the doctor to provide, I mean, to provide to you improve to services. improve services. Now, there's something people have said. It's believed that when uh, there are questionable medical tragedies within a hospital, yeah. that the medical personnel close ranks. It happens a lot in this country. How do you think we can reduce the incidence of that? Uh, and what can be done for the patient or the relatives of the patient, as the case may be? Okay, the way they put it sometimes is that uh, doctors bury their mistakes. All right. Okay. <laughs> you That's get the way, picture. Yes. But you see, the thing is that this relationship, you have to be honest about it. Doctors are human beings. There, there's a possibility of errors. Errors can happen at any time. There could be complications. Mistakes can happen. But when it happens, you should be honest about it. And perhaps yeah. if there and was a talk beforehand, yes, the patient right. and the family will be aware that these things are possible. Exactly. In fact, the way we put it is that um, say sorry before see you in court. Mm. Okay? Say sorry before see you in court we try to make sure we sort the matter out within us, even if we have to compensate you. You see, if it happens to this patient today, it can happen to me tomorrow. So if we develop a culture of bearing some of these mistakes, I can be the victim. But the thing is that if it happens, we should interrogate it, such that it doesn't happen again. We should learn from it, okay? And we should know that if a patient has been hurt, one way or the other, even if you are right, you must do everything to assuage the feelings of that patient. 
you must emotional have intelligence. Emotion. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been so good. It's like a departure from the normal, but it's still health see. matters. You, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Thank for you very me. much also for staying with us and uh, listening to this. Hope you've learned a thing or two. At least, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Thank you.